two, one. All right, so welcome in. So we're gonna talk about limits, all right? So now I wanna try to give you a very visual introduction to limits in this video, and then I wanna pass it on in some places that you've actually have touched on limits, okay, if you've done high school math at some point, so pre-calculus. And the first example that I have, you see here basically a circle. So I've kind of encoded it in into decimals. Now we can have any radius we like of the circle, it doesn't matter. Now, what if we wanted to approximate this area of a circle, but using polygons, right? So regular polygons where the sides are equal. Um, now you might say, well, why would I need to do that? Because I already know what the area of a circle is. It's pi r squared, so that's true. So if the radius is one, well, then it's just pi times one. And then I have my area, which is just pi. And so that's, that's fine, but actually, you know, way, way back, um, we wanted to approximate these areas and wanted to think about them. And I think actually about maybe somewhere between 200 and 300 BC, I think Archimedes, okay, kind of came up with this very neat idea of trying to approximate it with these regular polygons. So, you know, how would we do that? So let me just show you so you get a visual concept of this idea behind the limits, all right? So letting a number go to something or approach a particular number. So here's the circle itself. Now, what if I, you know, I'm gonna first draw a square. So you can see a square within this circle, okay? So that's what you see in here. And on the left-hand side, you can see that the area, so I actually have the area of the actual circle. So it's pi times r squared you know, equals, and you can see there's 3.1415, so on, because it's just pi. And then, okay, what I have just below it is I actually have the area of the polygon, in this case, the square, which is within this circle, okay? So, and what I have done is, okay, I have divided this in. Now, in this case, it would have been easy because of the fact that we know, okay, what the distances are, but I have divided it in such a way that you can see that a polygon can be made up of basically just triangles, right? So this is centered at the origin. So it has four triangles. So if I wanna know what the area of this square is, you know, I can basically say four times the area of the triangle. And that's what you see there on the left-hand side, which is called a uh, little subscript P. Okay, where the TN just tells me how many sides that the triangle has, and then the one half L times R, okay, the N, okay, so those are just variables. That's just telling me, okay, length times the actual height of the triangle, and I wanna take half of it. So uh, once I do this, okay, I can say, well, clearly, the difference between the areas is not the same, right? There's a big difference. So you can see there the area of the circle is 3.14, so etc. And then the area of this square is just two. Now the difference between them is, is pretty big. But so here's the neat thing. So you know what Archimedes kind of pointed out says, well, what if we you know start doubling the number of sides that we have? Okay, so for instance, you know, what if I do this? So now I have twice as many sides. So of course, this is all encoded into decimals. Okay, so you can see that on the left-hand side there, you know, I have put this in. Okay, so here's the code. So there's a little bit of code in there. Um, and for this, okay, you'll notice now I have twice as much. So I have a polygon. But hey, I have now approximated the circle and it looks a little better. Now the triangle, so the one that you see there in blue, well now, because I have eight sides instead of four, because I doubled the number of sides, okay, my um, area of the new polygon, again, it's just triangles. I have eight of them in total, right? I can find out what the area of one triangle is. That's not very hard. So it's one half, okay, again, length times the height. And then I can multiply it by eight because there's will be eight of them to fill this polygon. And then I would get what my area is. So you notice that, okay, well on the left hand side says my area is 2.828. And now the difference between the area of the circle and the area of this you know, eight sided polygon 
is, you know, it's reduced, right? So the difference between them. And now I can continue this, right? So I can say, well, what if I double it again? So instead of having eight sides, okay, I'm going to have now 16 sides. And I'm noticing, ooh, well, this definitely looks much better and approximates the circle, okay, you know, more so than before. Again, so notice my triangle has gotten smaller, right? Because the sides are getting smaller. Now, so that triangle now, okay, now I would have to multiply it by 16 because I have 16 little triangles that would fill up this polygon. And again, I notice on the left-hand side, the difference between the actual area of the circle and this polygon is getting much, much smaller. And now I can continue this. And now this is the whole idea of limits. So now I can say, well, I can just keep doubling the number of sides, right? And if I keep doubling, so if I make the number of sides go to infinity, so as it gets, you know, really, really big, I'm going to get an extremely close approximation to the circle. And in fact, if you do let it go to infinity, so infinite amount of sides, you're going to make these triangles so tiny that they're basically almost like lines. And we're going to traverse the entire circle. So, you know, here, if I double this again, okay, so notice what happens now. That's pretty cool, right? Now, there's still, because if I zoom in here, right, you'll notice that, okay, you know, I still have, maybe I'll go here where that I made that triangle, I still have some piece missing, right? But if I keep doubling this, you know, this, okay, so notice I doubled it again, right? And that little piece is getting smaller. Now, again, of course, I can zoom in and I can see it, okay? And then I can zoom in again and I can double the number of sides. Now, if I zoom out, now, sure, I have a polygon, okay, with a lot of sides, the triangle itself, now I can find out what the difference is, but notice on the left-hand side, the areas. So the area of the circle, and then the area of this polygon, the little area of the P, so it's basically very close now, 3.14. Now the difference between them, which is the A minus the AP, which you see on the left, is now getting really tiny, okay? So that's what we are, seeing right there. So that's pretty neat. And now if I keep going, you know, of course, you know, if I keep making this, you know, bigger and bigger, meaning the number of sides getting bigger and bigger, I'm basically going to approximate the circle. And that's the limit. So the limit as the number of sides goes to infinity is basically, okay, we're going to come up with the circle itself. And then the area, we can actually find out exactly. Notice that now the difference between the two areas, I mean, it's pretty much negligent because it's zero point, you know, so on, all of these different zeros that I have. So that's pretty neat. So here, you know, if I play this, okay, within here so that you can see, you know, what is going to be happening, okay? So this thing is just zooming around, okay, with less sides, and then it's going to go back. So we really started with a square, and then as we keep cutting up, right, and making more sides, we can fill up and we can get to a circle within the limit. So that's the idea of these limits that we have. Now, this is one concept. I'm going to actually attach, you know, a link to this, okay? So in Desmos, so in the show notes, if you will wanna play with this and then get the code for this, you can just go in the show notes, okay? And then I'll attach it for you so that you yourself can play around with it, you know, with the number. You can open up this folder and then see what is actually happening and internally in there if you really are into coding. All right, so that's an example of how limits can be applied. Now, you know, in calculus, you're not gonna necessarily maybe start with circles or something, but you can glance back and think about limits in other ways. So for example, you can talk about limits in terms of a sequence, okay? So this is a geometric sequence, which you possibly maybe have had in grade 11. And then you have a geometric series just below it with the same thing. So that's just the summation of all the components. Now within here, notice that 
what we're doing is we're starting with one and then we have one over two and then it goes to one over four, one over eight. So really what I have, I have Tn, okay, which is equal to, you know, I am starting with one over two, I guess it started, okay, so I'm gonna do this n minus one, okay, where n is gonna be equal to one, two, you know, three, okay, and so on. Or, you know, I can make this like this, okay, and then just say that n, you know, started off with zero instead of one, so that would be the same thing. And now as n, so as n goes to infinity, so as it gets bigger and bigger, and we typically will designate this as, you know, the limit as n goes to infinity of this particular sequence, Tn. Now Tn is one over two and then raised to the n. What do we notice? That this thing is basically gonna be tending towards zero. And so the limit of this sequence is zero. Now, does it ever get there? No, not really. Because no matter how big n you will make, it's still gonna be one over an extremely large number, but never really gets to zero. Now, we can also visualize this as well. So in terms of, you know, coming back to decimals within here, so let me code this up. And now I can make n, so notice within here, I can make n larger and larger, right? So within here, if I make, you know, n for instance, 10, and let me remove this, you can see that the sequence is basically tending towards zero. And also, you know, if I make it 100, then, you know, you can see the same thing happening. It basically just tends towards zero. So the limit, okay, as n approaches infinity, this sequence will approach zero, which is no surprise. And you maybe have seen that in sequences. I'll put up a link up above there to sequences for you, okay, if you have forgotten about geometric sequences. Now, you know, what else can we do? So in here, I also point out, well, we can do the same thing in terms of limits to find the, a series. So the geometric series in this case, so we have a summation, you know, one over two to the i, so starting from zero. And then we can see, okay, what's the sum? Now, you may remember or you may not remember, okay? So with regards to this, because we have, okay, this, if the magnitude is less than, okay, and it's kind of less than one, but greater than zero, um, in this case, we actually can figure out exactly what the sum is. So the sum, okay, as in this, in this case, of the sequence, so as it goes to infinity, is equal to, it's gonna be one all over one minus a half in this case, okay, and this is gonna be equal to two. This is if you remember, you know, the geometric series. I'll put up a link up above there, it's kind of to grade 11 work, okay, for you there. Well, we can make this, okay, so very visual for us, okay, so to try to see that the summation actually will approach Okay, so as you're going through, so for instance, you know, if I go back here, I'll go, go over to decimal, so I kind of plotted this out. So, you know, you can see here that, you know, as n, okay, so notice it's, we're gonna make n bigger and bigger, okay, so what is highlighted there, okay, is the summation itself in between, okay, and notice that indeed, so we're basically approaching, you know, two, and as you make this, larger and larger, just gets closer and closer, okay, within here, okay, so that's what happens. And that's pretty cool to be able to see that. And again, it is a limit. Now, the Desmos component, okay, as you're watching this, I just wanna make it much more visual for you so that you can see that happening and as it approaches two. So as the N, okay, so in this case, as we are approaching infinity in terms of the summation, we're gonna be approaching basically two. So you have seen 
these types of concepts, okay, within sequences and series, and the limit component, um, you are going to be watching, you know, quite a bit and quite closely and studying it, especially throughout all of calculus. Here is another example with regards to a function. So this is, you know, a, a function made up of two pieces. We call this piecewise function that we have. So there's two pieces, one which is for x greater than zero, and then one which is for x is less than zero. So notice it's not defined at zero, right? So it's not defined. So there's nothing. If I put f at zero, it doesn't actually exist for this particular function, which is made up of two pieces here. But we can certainly do something like this. We can try to see if we can say limit, okay, as x, let's say, approaches zero, but now it can approach zero from the viewpoint of this function, which is on the right hand side. Now, the way that we would designate this, we put this a little bit of a plus here so that it is approaching from the right hand side. So in this case, it's nothing else, right? So if I draw this out on the x and y axis, so that function is nothing else. So it's you know, right here, this is my one, and then it just has a slope of one. So as you're moving along in this direction, you know, the question is, what does this approach, right? And what is this limit actually approach? And well, I mean, you can clearly see that it's approaching one. And now for the other case, well, if you were trying to approach it from the left hand side, so from the left, which means that we would have to focus in on this. Now this is x squared, so this is gonna look kind of funky. It's gonna go up like this. So if we're approaching it from this side, right? Then in this case, this limit from the left would actually be approaching zero, right? So for from the right-hand side, it is approaching one and from the left hand side it is approaching zero and that's what you will be talking about and i will do a video on that in terms of limits and continuity but here i just wanted to you know provide you that idea with regards to this concept okay uh, of limits so let me graph this okay i'll do this quickly all right so there you have it okay so i just put in, okay, on the left-hand side, you can see how you can input that in into decimals. So, you know, on the left, okay, if we would put any point in here, so as you can see here, you know, as we're coming from the left-hand side, so the limit as we're approaching zero, yeah, as we get closer and closer is, you know, it's going to be zero for us for x squared. And obviously that's the case, okay, but notice it's not defined at zero, right? But as we get closer and closer, we basically are approaching it. Now, it's not defined because I didn't define it for this function. Now, on the right-hand side, you know, if as I'm, as I'm approaching this, so as the limit tends towards, okay, zero from the right-hand side, okay, this will be basically getting all the way up to one. Now, it's not defined there, again, because I didn't define the function there. So that's what we would have. So, you know, these ideas of limits you're going to see um, quite a bit in calculus. And I hope that this kind of gives you a nice visual sense from the viewpoint of, you know, the nice little approximation, okay, right here that we had of our actual circle. So, you know, the area of the circle, okay, and then we could see yeah, it's super cool that it just approximates it, okay, by polygons or, you know, the sequences or series or functions, and then thinking about, you know, what these limits actually are. All right. Okay. So thanks for watching and we will see you in a future video. Okay. We'll really get into calculus then. Bye everybody. Take care. See you soon.